Hey, basketball fans. This is Eric Pincus of Basketball Insiders and Bleacher Report. And today we're going to answer the question, how does KCP have a no trade clause? Well, let's begin with what this video is not. It's not going to be a referendum on Contavious Caldwell Pope as a player. Admittedly, he's not very popular on Lakers Twitter except as a punching bag. I know that Coach Frank Vogel and his teammates think highly of him. This is a debate for another video, but today we're going to use KCP as a case study to better understand one of the quirks of the NBA's collective bargaining agreement known as the one-year bird rule. All right, let's get to some background. The Lakers first signed KCP in the summer of 2017. He's represented by Rich Paul, who is also the agent of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. When LeBron signed up, KCP was rewarded with a second one-year contract, followed by another deal this summer for two more years. But there's a catch, and we'll return to that point momentarily. Before we get into the why, it's worth noting that KCP's situation is not unique. Several players have similar veto power on trades, like Vince Carter of the Atlanta Hawks, Rodney Hood of the Portland Trailblazers, and even fellow Lakers JaVale McGee and Rajon Rondo. None of them have a true no-trade clause. In fact, no one in the league does. That's because, in part, players are only eligible if they've been in the league for at least eight seasons, including four, with the team that they're signing with. And KCP has only been in the league for six years, so clearly, he's not eligible. So what gives? The answer lies in bird rights. Named after Larry Bird, Hall of Fame Boston Celtic, bird rights represent how long a player has been under contract. More importantly, they help determine how much a team can pay to retain that player in free agency. Rights after one year are considered non-bird. Two years are early bird and three or more are full bird. When KCP first signed with the Lakers, they didn't have his rights at all. Instead, the team used cap space to sign him for $17.7 million. After the year was finished, they held his non-bird rights, which allows a team to give a raise up to 120% of his previous salary. For KCP, who made $17.7 million in his first year, he would be eligible for a $21.3 million contract. Instead, they re-signed him for one year at $12 million. In July, the Lakers held KCP's early bird rights, which allowed the team to give him an even bigger raise at 175% of the previous salary, which would be $21 million. Instead, they reached a deal starting at $9.3 million using the Lakers cap space in a contract totaling $19 million, but we're going to use the numbers without almost $2.5 million in unlikely incentives. Where things get sticky is the player option on the second season. From the league's point of view, KCP has a one-year deal with the right to extend that contract for another season. He'll have to make that decision before next July, but since he may be a free agent, the one-year bird rule is in effect. All right, so let's get right to the heart of the matter. When a player is traded, their rights travel with them. For instance, the Lakers have Anthony Davis's full bird rights, which will allow them to pay him a maximum salary when he hits free agency, presumably this summer. But the collective bargaining agreement does not want to encourage teams to re-sign players for one season with the sole intention of trading them before the deadline in February. For players who re-sign for one year, their rights will not go with them if traded. Instead, their bird clock will completely reset and the incoming team won't have early bird or full bird rights on the player. This in turn limits how much the new team can pay to re-sign that player in free agency the following season. And then as further disincentive, the player must consent to a trade since they will be losing those rights. This is the one-year bird rule and why KCP has the ability to block his part in any trade the Lakers might conceive of this season. And while Avery Bradley also signed a two-year deal with the Lakers this past summer with a player option, the rule doesn't apply to him because the Lakers would only have his non-bird rights if he opts out this summer. He wouldn't be able to block a trade. The rule only applies to players who re-sign with the same team. As far as KCP, if he opts out of his deal this summer, he'll be eligible for a new contract with the Lakers starting at roughly $35 million. If he's traded, his new team won't have full bird rights. Instead, with non-bird rights, the most they can pay him is almost $10 million. Now, we can certainly debate how much KCP is worth in the open market, but that's not the point. The CBA gives KCP the ability to protect those rights. That's the heart of the one-year bird rule and why KCP can block any trade. And there's really no loophole for the Lakers. KCP can choose to opt in early to that second year of his contract and lose that veto power. But again, that's up to KCP. The only financial incentive he might have is in his trade kicker. That's outside of the scope of today's video, but KCP would be eligible for a bonus between $700,000 and $2 million, depending on the option and when he's traded. But I don't think there's enough on the table to make the assumption that KCP is willing to greenlight any trade away from the Lakers where he's playing with LeBron James, Anthony Davis on a potential title contender. Well, that may not be the news you wanted to hear today, 
Hopefully you have a better understanding of the mechanics a little more clearly. If you are interested in learning more about the collective bargaining agreement, I highly recommend Larry Kuhn's FAQ. If you want to see the actual collective bargaining agreement, it can be found on the Players Union website. Or you could just hit me up on social media or read any of my articles on Bleacher Report for Basketball Insiders. You can catch me now and then on NBA TV or listen to me weekly on the Hollywood Hoops podcast. Thank you for watching and a shout out to Laker Film Room for providing such high quality, informative content.